last week's class we began talking about cognitive models and this adds um, a mind, a person's intelligence into what we've previously talked about which focused on reinforcement theory and the the model that we're using in the class and we're going to keep developing is uh, called the social infor information processing model. <clears throat> the social information processing model characterizes people as intelligent sense makers. And um, this has um, a couple of important meanings. First, the notion that they're intelligent and, and the notion that they make choices. And the choices that they make are develop are based on their beliefs and uh, understanding of the world, and then they make choices about their behavior. So things that we think of as of interest to us in leadership, like motivation, uh, people's willingness to engage with their work, to contribute ideas, are all, from the standpoint of the social information processing model, choices that people make. And uh, these choices are based on how they understand the workplace. So they have causal explanations for their own and others behavior in particular management behavior and so they're trying to understand the world in which they uh, find themselves working and on the basis of that understanding we, we um, understand them to be making choices about uh, their work behaviors. And so the social information processing uh, model in particular puts a lot of weight on information. So the information that people can observe so people cannot see into other people's heads. We know this. So how do we then understand other people's motives? How do we understand uh, the situation and dynamic of the workplace? What our um, boss expects to, uh, of us? And then how uh, do we, as people in management positions, you know, trying to lead our people, how do we understand what their motives are, what their understandings, what's driving their uh, behavior. And for, for the social information processing model, it is information combined with prior and beliefs and experiences that leads people to develop um, explanations and predictions about uh, how, how situations are going to unfold. And in particular, people are interested in predicting what's going to happen next. So they're interested in predicting whether they're going to get promoted. They're interested in predicting uh, what of their behaviors is going to be valued and recognized. And they're interested in predicting what's going to happen with the company. They they're, have personal interests tied up often with their jobs, and so they're interested in lots of things. And, and again, this notion of intelligent sense makers is what's going on, what's going to happen in the future, is all part of what the social information uh, processing model um, captured. Now, as one of the kind of key things in the social information processing model, and we talked about this notion of what social information is, is there's lots of it. And so there is a selectivity happening that uh, operates on all potential information. So part of the model is what is it people pick and, and, and do they do it in predictable ways. And we know for one thing that is for sure true is people's perceptions and what information they they take is highly impacted by some pretty predictable processes about uh, information that comes from socially somewhere others uh, or information that's just just made salient to them and so when we try to convey to people in the workplace we do a presentation on a new idea. We're making salient some information, and that information we hope uh, people will understand, believe, and that it will impact their behavior. One of the key things that we also know is that people's prior beliefs um, influence their perception, and what, what they understand about the world influences what, what they take in the way of information. This is a very important um, bias. It comes up over and over again. Uh, it's the expectation bias. Uh, it's also going to appear when we talk about communication as the frame of reference bias. Uh, so the basic notion is that uh, what we our understanding that we have, our beliefs that we have, impact the information that we pay attention to and regard as true. 
And it's, it's whether we accept information or not has an impact on whether it impacts our belief or not. One of the most important of the um, judgment processes we talked about, we talked about uh, uh, three in specific, ex ex expectancy, uh, equity, and attribution. But attribution is extremely important because it is um, a judgment process that is about making causal judgments. And in particular, it's a judgment process of making judgments about individuals and, in, and individual motives and also tr trying to understand the impact of the external world on what unfolds in front of us. Attribution is based on what we can observe. Situation, behaviors, and consequences. We use this to make judgments about motives of individuals, what their beliefs might be, and we use it also uh, to make judgments about ourselves. There's some attribution impacts here. The key thing on attribution to understand is while it's a bias in that people t tend to make uh, certain types of decisions more frequently than they should, it's not always wrong, and it's also, it's not a dysfunction. It's really the attribution biases that we talked about, fundamental attribution bias, self-serving bias, are based on information asymmetries. It's that we have a hard time seeing some kinds of information. And for ourselves, we see a lot more information than other people see, and we're selective in how we uh, choose it. The key thing in the social information processing model compared to what we've talked about so far is this notion that Beliefs and attitudes are changeable. Uh, it's why fundamentally we're interested in uh, this model, is this notion that we can change people's behavior by changing their beliefs and attitudes. And our experience is that this is, this is possible but hard. It is extremely hard to do. Um, but we, we know that, um, for instance, we have this expectation bias, but there's also a counteracting bias called the recency bias that people do look at and learn from new experience and new information. They may only reluctantly accept it. It may take a while for them to uh, engage in that learning process. But the notion is but there's both an expectation and an impact of prior expectancy, uh, or I'm sorry, an expectation bias, uh, an impact of prior learning and experience, but there's also this recency bias. And we are, we do adapt to the situation. We do see that maybe things can go in a different way. And that's extremely important for us. And we're going to start talking about um, these kinds of change processes in the next couple of weeks. Uh, first will be with communication, where we're simply trying to share information with people, which we hope that information will impact their behavior by impacting their beliefs. And then we're going to talk about uh, commitment, which is a process of um, eliciting behavior to, to change people's beliefs. On the further reading, one thing that's here is a uh, uh, novel, Ken Kesey's One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. This was an Academy Award-winning movie as well. The novel is really much better. The novel is placed inside of um, Insane Asylum, and uh, it's, it's, it's humorous and tragic and you know, quite an interesting book. But one of the things that's, I think, most interesting about it is you are... <clears throat> The, the narrator is somebody who is kind of deeply psychotic, and the novel is kind of unfolding as, as he is emerging from this psychotic state. So there's all sorts of different perceptual aspects to it and um, interpretive elements and kind of what's going on. And, and it's really is, um, it's a, I think, a wonderful read. I think it's one of the great um, novels of, uh, of 20th century literature. And... Um, Again, it was, it was a very good movie with uh, Jack Nicholson, and uh, it's about, a lot of it's about how uh, the people who are in this situation relate to one another and rally around and support each other. The second book is a very important book, it just came out a couple of years ago, it's called Blind Spots, and um, it um, really focuses on the accounting industry and difficulties in the accounting industry they have in conducting reliable and valid audits. Um, so it's about the profession, and it's about the, the difficulty 
of some of the judgments that have to be made and the difficulty in recognizing that we have difficulty making judgments. And so one of the interesting things about this is blind spots is that we can often see um, things like attributional biases in other people. We're not very good at seeing them in ourselves. And that is the notion of the blind spot and how it is uh, pervasive in some professional setting. So that is what we've done in uh, week five. We're going to move into and talk about ways that belief change happens and how that impacts behavior. But at the core of the social information processing model, again, is we got smart people uh, trying to understand the world in which they're operating. And their capacity to understand is base, is very much influenced by the information that's available to them. And based on that information, they form their behavior. And we're interested from a leadership standpoint in how do we influence that process.